What's going on, everybody? I'm your host, Chris Noggle, and welcome to Money School Podcast, where today we're going to talk about the big lie. How do you feel when you're lied to? How does that make you feel inside? What do you start to think about when you're told a lie and you find out that you were lied to? Well, then let me ask you another question. How do you feel when you find out somebody's been lying to you over and over and over again? Do you lose trust in them? Do you take advice from them still? Do you want to be around them? No. When you're lied to, once you might be able to forgive, maybe even twice, maybe even thrice. But after that, you're writing them off, right? Well, now this is where it gets really interesting. What if I told you you've been being lied to your entire life? That's right. And then I'm going to tell you that it's not your fault. You didn't do anything wrong. You just bought into a system of lies. You were taught the big lie. And that big lie is this, how money really works. I'm going to teach you what the big lie is. I'm going to tell you how you've been lied to your whole life. And I'm going to tell you how just changing one thing, you can change it all which sounds too easy, right? sounds too good to be true that I, all I have to do, Chris, is change one thing. That's right. Just one thing. But changing one thing, although it sounds simple, you got to get through this, your mindset. You have a broken mindset. And that, I'm going to tell you right now, is not going to be easy for you to change. So let's get right into it. What is the big lie? Well, from a young age, I don't care how far back you go. It was instilled in you that you got to work hard. You got to trade your hours for dollars. You got to go out there and you got to hustle. You watched your parents do it. You watched your grandparents do it. This is what they were taught. This is what their parents were taught. This is what their grandparents taught their parents. This goes way back, folks. And I'm not saying you don't have to work hard. You can't be lazy. You can't sit on the couch and expect things to happen. But here's where the rubber meets the road. When we are taught to live in a society where the only thing we are supposed to do is work hard, do everything they say, conform, and by doing that, your hours will be worth more. Go pay for an education, go to college, get the four-year, get the six-year, hell, spend 10 years at college, go deep, deep, deep in debt because colleges are profit institutions, not nonprofit. And then you come out and what do you do? You start in a job, J-O-B, where what do you do with that job? You have been taught to go trade your hours for dollars. Now, I can go back in my history, in my past, to when I was a young man. And, you know, I would think, oh, my gosh, $5 an hour. I used to work on a farm. We got paid $3.75 an hour. But the top guys got paid 5 or even $6 an hour. I'm showing my age a little bit. But back then... I was being taught that what I wanted was $6 an hour, not $3.75 an hour. So I was putting a value to that hour. And as time went on, as you moved up the ranks, as you got better jobs, your hours became worth more. And then you got into a career, whether it's based on your education, based on some people you knew, relationships, whatever, you landed in a career. And in that career, what did you do? The very first thing you did, the first thing I did when I got into the financial advisory career is I looked at all those guys around the outside and I said, how much are they making an hour? That's what I was thinking. How many hours are they working and how much do they make? Do the simple mathematics and you would figure out how much an hour they made. Was it $100 an hour? How many of you would love to make $100 an hour? How about $200 an hour? 500 an hour. How about $1,000 an hour? Wouldn't that be pretty awesome? Right in that equation of everything we just talked about, I want you to visualize and I want you to think back to when you were young. I want you to think back to your career path. Isn't that what you did? What you did? Isn't that what you were taught to do in grade school? Heck, in elementary school, in grade school, in high school, in college, you were taught to get a job, to work for somebody, or maybe even work for yourself, trade hours for dollars, hustle hard, do everything they said, conform, climb the corporate ladder, and by doing so, your 
ours would be worth more. So let me tell you what the lie is. You have been taught your entire life to put a cap on the amount of wealth you can have. Because when you put a valuation, let's just call it $100 to your time, you are limiting yourself. You are getting yourself in a limited mindset, in a scarcity mindset, because it doesn't matter how much your hours worth. It's not enough. Because your hours, your time is simply priceless because it's the one thing you can't get back. The one thing you can never make more of. So why would we be taught to put a monetary value on something that is priceless, something that is never coming back, something that we can't make any more of? That's because we are taught to get a job. We are taught to trade hours. Folks, the wealthy don't do this. They may have in their past, but then they realize that, holy crap, by putting a valuation on my time, I am limiting my wealth. So this is just one of the many lies. We're going to go through a couple of them today. So first off, I'm not saying that you're priceless and that nobody can hire you for enough money. I'm simply saying you got to change the way you look at your time. Because your time is priceless, you got to make the best use of it. And how do you make the best use of it? I'll tell you right now, solve someone's problem. You want to become wealthy? You want to become a, a multimillionaire? You want to become a billionaire? Get really freaking good at spending your time on solving other people's problems. Stop spending your time trading it for hours, punching a clock, working the nine to five and believing that that's all there is. Well, honey, this is all there is. This is all we can do. This is where we're at. Scarcity, scarcity, scarcity. They want you to be scared. Look around. Look around today. Fear. They want you to be in a scarcity mindset because people with an abundant mindset have power. People with an abundant mindset have the capability to create and create amazing things because abundance is what we all have. Whatever you ask of life, life will give you. It's all over the place. You've read this. You've either read it in the Bible. You've been taught this, but we don't believe it because of the lies we've been told. So what is it that you should be doing with your time? I just told you, solve other people's problems. And in solving other people's problems, you and your problems will be solved. And then once you start amassing some money, and we're not going to talk about the laws of wealth, that will be another solo podcast. But then I want you to think about your money working for you. This is what the wealthy do. They don't work for money. Their money works for them first and foremost. And because their money works for them, there is no limit on how much wealth they can accumulate because their time isn't being traded for hours. Their money is working for them 24-7, over and over, never stops, never asks for vacations, never wears out, never needs sleep. You do. You want vacations. You want to rest. You need time off. You need all those things that money doesn't need. Money is a tool, a tool that will work forever for you any way you want. The second lie you've been taught, this is probably the biggest one. And I didn't want to just lead with this, but this is the biggest lie you've ever been taught in your life. You have been taught first to trade hours for dollars. And when you make that money, let's just say it's $100 an hour. What have you been taught to do with that $100? Put it in the bank. You've been taught by your grandparents, by your parents, by everybody around you to take that money that you traded hours for and to put it in the bank. So what did you really do? What is the lie in that? Chris, what's wrong with that? You gave up control of your money. You gave up control of the tool that can go to work for you. And you gave up control to the bank. And then what does the bank do? The bank then goes and makes that money work for them. You've all seen it, right? You go into the bank. You give the bank the money. They deposit it. Do they put it in a little box with your name on it in the vault? No, folks. The vault has no more money anymore. They take that money and they move it. They take that money and they move it through those glass cubicles right behind you. And what are they doing by moving it? They're making loans. They're making loans and they're making your money work for them. And in doing so, folks, I want you to be very crystal clear on this one point. And you giving up control of your money because you've been taught the lie to give up control of your money. You gave the bank the ability to make your money go to work for them instead of to go to work for you. 
because the money is now in the bank's control. And the bank makes 400 to 1,300% more than you do. Oh, you don't believe me. That's not true, Chris. I have people all the time tell me that's not true. Really? Prove me wrong because you know what? I'll prove me right by going to BauerFinancial.com and looking up any bank in this country during any period of time that you want, and you will see that banks never make less than 400% more than you do on the money you leave there. You're just not doing the math right. How much are the banks actually paying you to give up control of your money? Not much zero in most checking accounts, maybe 0.006 in a savings account, maybe, maybe 0.008 in a CD. If you're getting 1%, you're one of the few. But what is inflation today? It's above 6%. This podcast is taking place right now in 2022, January of 2022, when we are in runaway inflation, peaking over 6% right now. So if your money isn't working for you, making more than 6%, your money is working backwards. But that's because you've been taught the big lie, and that is to give up control of your money to the bank. How do you correct that? So let me give you a little advice. Never, ever keep more than six months of your monthly expenses in the bank. The rest of it should be working for you. And I'm not going to get deep into how to make your money work for you, but I will tell you the third lie, because you're probably thinking, oh, my money's working for me. How? Well, I got one of those 401ks at work. Great. Lie number three, go to work, trade hours for dollars, buy into the big lie that the 401k and some fancy day in the future after 59 and a half called retirement, when you sail off into the sunset is the pinnacle of your life. Newsflash, if you sail off into the sunset, you retire and you do nothing because you don't have a purpose, because you don't want to work anymore, because you've been taught the lie, you will more than likely die statistically. When we stop working, we lose purpose. We lose direction. We don't know what we're doing and why we're doing it. So therefore, our body shuts down and statistically people die. Retirement is a lie. 401ks are just another fancy lie, another fancy way for you to take the money that you earn and give up control of it. You all should read the book called 501k by Ted Benna. Who is Ted Benna? Ted Benna came up with the 401k. Ted Benna could be coined the creator of the 401k. And in Ted Benna's book, 501k, Ted Benna tells you how bad 401ks are because they're not what he created. The government took them and morphed them into something that was not his creation. Think that doesn't happen? Happens all the time. The government likes to take things that people create, twist them, mold them so that it benefits the government. So how is a 401k a bad thing? Why is a 401k the big lie? Well, let me tell you, you've been taught to take your best dollars, the dollars that you have today, And just so everybody knows, are your dollars, let me ask you a question. Are your dollars that you have today worth more today or are they worth more in the future? One of you that said it's worth more today, you are right. But for those of you that said your money, your dollars will be worth more in the future, that is not true. And then I would ask you, how many candy bars could you have bought 20 years ago for $1? The answer is more than today. The conclusion Your dollars are the most valuable today and they will never, ever, ever be worth more in the future due to inflation. And inflation is not going away. Inflation is a hidden tax. The government will never allow inflation to go away. So get used to it. Understand how to beat it. Understand how to hedge it. And understand that your dollars are worth the most today. So what does a 401k tell you to do? Go to work. Trade your hours for dollars. And before you get paid those dollars and have taxes come out, why don't you just take the money pre-tax and put it into this account where it will grow for the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years, tax deferred, ooh, tax deferred. And then someday later, 59 and a half or beyond, you can take that money out and enjoy your retirement. So part of that whole thing is not so bad. 
And that is, this gives you a forced savings plan, a way to accumulate money for a future goal. Where's the lie in that, Chris? The lie is you just gave up control of your most valuable dollars. Second question I'm going to ask you is, are, are taxes going up or down? Oh, this is 2022. You all know the answer to that. They're going up, up, up and away because we are at the lowest tax bracket you will ever see, probably for the most of your life, depending on how old you are. So if taxes are going up, why would we want to take our best, most valuable dollars today, give up control of them, put them in an account called a 401k, where we cannot take that money back out without penalties or some negative thing that impacts that money. So we gave up control of that money. We gave up our best dollars today. We gave up control because they tricked us, lied to us to believe that we should buy into the pre-tax deduction. Well, Chris, I don't want to pay taxes on that money. Oh, sir or ma'am, you are going to pay more taxes on that money because we already went through the equation. Your dollars are worth the most today. In the future, they're going to be what? Weaker. So you're going to put money away today into the 401k. You're going to wait 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Then you're going to take what back? Weaker dollars. Let's go back to the beginning. You're going to take your dollars today, your most valuable dollars. You're going to put them into the 401k. Why? Oh, because they, they're going to give me a tax deduction. I don't have to pay tax on that money. Where are taxes today? The lowest they'll probably ever be in your life. Where are they going to be in the future? Higher. You already told me that. So you're putting in tax, lower tax dollars today. You gave up control of the most valuable dollars to take them out when they're weaker and they're taxed higher. Makes a lot of freaking sense, doesn't it? You have been lied to. Oh, yeah, but Chris, the match. Great. Let's talk about the match. I think match is great. It is technically free money. So you're putting money into the 401k. They are giving you a match of how much? Is it 3%? Is it the safe harbor 4%? Ooh, are they giving you 6% match dollar for dollar? So you have to understand not just the match, but how the match works. Do so you have to put in 6% to get three? Is it 3% dollar for dollar? Meaning you put in 3% and they give you 3%. Well, here's the rule. Okay. Not everybody agrees with this. And some people would say you shouldn't put any money in a 401k, but let me kind of be the neutral middle ground. If you're going to put money in a 401k, don't put a penny more than what they're willing to give you in a match. If the match is 3% dollar for dollar, then put in 3%. If it's 4% dollar for dollar, put in 4%. If you got to put in 6% to get three, then put in six, not a penny more because I can't give you free, free, free money and nobody else will either. So you might as well take advantage of that, but put no more than that. Oh, but Chris, I'm maxing out my 401k. Why? Well, because I need a tax deduction. Buy real estate, find other deductions, buy a 6,000 pound or more truck or car and use it for business. There are so many ways to get tax deductions. There's depreciation. There's all sorts of ways you can play the game and not give up control of your most valuable dollars, which are today's dollars, not give up control of your money so that someday later you take back the money and have to pay tax on more money at a higher tax rate. Wake up. You've been lied to. You have been taught to do things with your money that you would never do with things that money buys. Let me give you an example. Would you ever go to the grocery store and buy a nice Italian loaf of bread? Come home with that beautiful Italian loaf of bread. That thing smells good. Oh, man. Freshly baked Italian bread. And then what do you do? You put it in the freezer and you shut the door and then you wait. Five, 10, or 15 years, you come back, you open that freezer, you take out that awesome Italian loaf of bread, which used to smell amazing, and you sniff it. What's it smell like? Freezer burned. You taste it. Ugh, you don't want that. Would you ever eat that five, 10, or 15 year old Italian bread? Nope. How about this? Would you ever go buy your dream car, whatever it is, the Lambo, the Ferrari, the Range Rover, the Mercedes? And right as you're about to get the keys to go in your brand new car, you say, hold on a second. I got to treat this car just like I treat my money. I can't drive this car for 5, 10, or 15 years from now. Or buy your dream house for your significant other. And right when you're about to get the keys to go open the door for the first time for your significant other, you say, honey, hold on a second. We got to treat this purchase the same way we treat our money. We can't move into this house for 5, 10, or 15 years. The answer is no, no, and no, you would not do any of those because you 
would never do things with your money that you do with things your money buys. If I said that wrong, that's okay. But think about it. You would never give up control of your house, your car, that loaf of bread and wait 5, 10, 15 years. But we've been taught to do things with money that we would never, ever do with things that money buys because you've been lied to, folks. If you're putting more than the match in your 401k, stop and think. Logic goes a long way. Think, number one, your money is the most valuable today. Think, number two, tax rates are only going to go up. Think, number three, inflation is going to kill your money. When you put money in your 401k, you have a very small basket of mutual funds in most cases to invest in. Most of them are high fee mutual funds like those freedom funds, those retirement target date funds, high fees, high fees, high fees. Why do you think they push them? Why do you think there's more of those than any other fund in your 401k? Oh, well, Chris, because it's self-adjust, because it's easy. Exactly. They've made it so fucking easy for you that you have forgotten that easy equals more costs. That's right. You've been lied to. You've been lied to most of your life when it comes to how money really works because you have been taught to give up control of your money so that somebody else can be in control, i.e. Wall Street, i.e. the banks. Because if you're not in control, they are. And what are they doing with your money? They're making that shit go to work for them because they understand money. They understand how money works. They understand that it's a tool. They understand it's a tool that will work 24-7 if they tell it to go to work but they play into the stupidity of you. Sorry, no disrespect, but you are stupid when it comes to money because you have been withheld the truth. You have been lied to. And therefore you are illiterate. You are not in the know when it comes to money, but I am teaching you simple, basic things. Do not put your money in banks more than six months of expenses monthly. Okay. So that's your nest egg. That's your emergency fund. Any more additional money that you make, Find a way to make it go to work for you. Get around the campfire. Learn. Get my books. I'll give you them for free. You want to learn how to make your money go to work for you? Great. Get my books for free. Go to chrisnoggle.com and you can grab a copy of this book, Drifting Away from Traditional Car Buying. This little booklet will teach you how to get all the money back for every car you ever buy, drive, and own. You want to learn how to be the bank and how to make your money work for you. You want to build wealth through your debts and expenses by making your money go to work for you and taking back control. Great. Mapping out the millionaire mystery. This will teach you how to do it. You want to understand private money so you can go out and make your money work for you, how you can be the bank and how you can understand money. Great. Private money guide. All these books are free. Go to chrisnoggle.com. Go to the little tab that says books or swipe down on your index finger until it says books and grab them. That is free advice. And that is me getting you to take action because it's time to end the lie. It's time to start taking back control of your money. Let's go one more round. I was a financial advisor for 16 years of my life. Started in the early 2000s, retired and sold my practice in 2018. What was I taught to do? Well, I was taught to go out and see clients, get to know their needs and goals, and then get them to give up control of, of their money to me because I was smarter, because I had the licenses, because I had the education and the knowledge to manage their money better than they could. And maybe I did. Maybe all financial advisors, for the most part, have more knowledge when it comes to traditional financial advising or traditional financial knowledge. They probably do. They probably have more knowledge than you do about money. But do they care more about your money than you do? Let me ask you that question again. Do they care? Did I care more about my clients' money than they did? The answer is a hard no. There is not a financial advisor out there. There is not a Wall Street broker. There is not a bank broker, a premier private banker out there that cares more about your money than you do. So why, let me ask you, why would you give up control to somebody that doesn't care as much about your money than you do? Why wouldn't you just spend small amount of time learning some basic, simple things so that you could be a good steward of your money. Now, I'm not saying all of your money should be in your control. Maybe you give up 
control of a little bit of that money in an area that you don't understand. And maybe you could apply one of the laws of wealth. And I'm going to do a solo podcast all about the six laws of wealth. But let me give you this one. If you're not first, you're last. This is law number three. Protect your wealth always. Only invest in things you know, like, and understand. Invest and lend to things and people who have shown, not just said. So does your advisor show you that they're good or do they just say they're good? Did you ask to see their performance on their portfolios? Did you ask to see what they invest in? Did you ask to see their tax returns? Probably not. Invest and lend to things or people who have shown, not just asked, that they are experts in a specific industry through time, wisdom, and experience. And I'm going to add failure in there as well, because you can't have wisdom if you haven't failed. Failure is the greatest teacher. So does the person you invest money with, number one, show you that they're good at what they do, or do they just say they're good? Do they prove it? Are they experts in a specific industry or are they experts in something through time, wisdom, experience, and the ability to pay or the ability to perform? Avoid unnecessary risk due to greed and impatience. Everybody right now is greedy and everybody right now is in a big fucking rush to get wealthy. There is no get rich quick, period. End of story. It doesn't exist. And if it does, your money will flee once you get it. Time separates the true wealthy and the imposters. What I just read to you is the third law of wealth. So your financial advisor that asked you or told you you should give up control of your most valuable dollars, your most precious dollars, the tool that could go to work for you, you're giving up control so that they can invest. Let me ask you, do you trust them? Oh, yes, I trust them explicitly. Why? Well, because they said they're really good because they're one of the better advisors. Says who? Well, says them. Did they prove it? No. Did they show you their statements that they performed really well? No. Did they show you your tax returns that they make more than you and have more than you and have actually done well? No. Then how do you know they're truly good at what they do? How much time have they been doing it? How much experience do they have? How much wisdom do they have? How many times have they failed? Are you asking the right questions when you're doing the due diligence to pick a good advisor, to pick a good steward of your money? See, here's what I will tell you, and this is one of the things you should do. This is not so much one of the lies. This is just logic. If you're going to pick somebody to invest your money, find somebody that's a specialist. Find somebody that's good at one specific or two specific, only a few specific things and have them invest in that, but make sure you do your due diligence. Make them prove to you that they're good at this. Make them show you that they're good at this. Make them talk to you about the time, the experience, and the wisdom that they have gained, and have them talk about their failures that allow them to be one of the specialists, one of the best in that particular realm that they call themselves an expert. See, a generalist isn't good at really much of anything. They're good at a whole wide array of things. They got a little knowledge in this, a little knowledge in that, a little knowledge in these things. That doesn't make them an expert in anything. That doesn't make them any better than you when it comes to managing your money. Because again, the lie is they do not care as much about your money as you do, because you will always care more about the money that you have worked hard for. You will always care more about the money that you just gave up control of. Wake up. Logic goes a long way. What else have you been lied to? Let's keep moving through this. I went long on that one, but that was an important one. Stop giving up control of your money to people that don't care, that don't have the knowledge, that don't have the wisdom. Stop giving up control of your money to 401ks where your money has to sit there for 5, 10, 15, 20, maybe even longer than that years where the money will lose power. The money will lose value because of inflation. Your taxes will go up. So you will amass a larger amount of money for sure, because over time your money will grow. And then you will take that money out and you will pay higher taxes than the taxes that you save by putting it in today. You would have been far better off finding a way to make your money go to work for you today, your most valuable dollars, 
and then become a good steward of your money in one or two categories that you know, like, and understand, or that you learn to know, like, and understand because you're passionate about it. You see how simple this is? You don't have to be good at everything. Be the specialist and invest your own money. Be a good steward of your own money in one, two, maybe even three categories. It doesn't take long to become an expert. It doesn't take long for you to become the bank either. You just change one thing. So all these different things we're talking about all come back to doing one thing. Take back control of your money. Change one thing. Change where your money goes first so that your money resides in a place that you're in control of it, unlike the bank. Put your money in a place where it can earn interest that will at least pace or hedge inflation. Put your money in a place where it can earn uninterrupted compound interest. Put your money in a place where you don't have to get dinged every single year to taxes where your money is tax-free, not tax-deferred. Tax deferred, I don't like because that means you got to kick the can and pay tax someday. You're just deferring the taxes. By deferring the taxes, you are agreeing to pay a higher tax rate in the future. Wake up. Put your money in tax-free buckets, places where it, the money can grow uninterrupted without ever being taxed, period. Understand the language so you understand the rules of engagement. Let's go one more round. What else? Have you been taught to do with your money? What else has been a big lie that you've been taught to do with your money? Well, you have been taught to make money. You have been taught to then give up control of that money to somebody else. You have been taught to put that money into places where you lose control of it, where it, it basically grows over time that you cannot access it. And you have been taught to then pay higher taxes on that money in the future because you've been baited into the now, which means you've been baited into getting the tax deduction at the lowest tax rate to paying higher taxes in the future. So these are all things you've been taught. While this has happened and you've given up control of all of your money, what have you also been taught? This is one of the fourth and largest. You could agree that this is either four or five, depending on whether or not we split apart advisors in 401k. So let's just call this five. The fifth lie, you have been taught to take money from the banks. You have been taught to borrow money from just about everything. You have been taught to buy things that you don't even need. You have been taught to spend your money on things that you don't even want. You have been taught to use credit. And that credit has turned into your debts. Let's talk about that. When you buy a car. Now, our grandparents, what did they used to do? They used to save up. They'd work, they'd save, they'd keep control of their money, and then they'd go and pay cash for a car. We don't really do that today. What have you been taught to do? Lease cars, right? Give up control of your money on a monthly basis. In, the, in, in return, you get to drive the car. What else have you been taught to do? Borrow money from the bank to finance the car. That takes all your control away from that car because now you don't even own the car. The bank does. Not only that, you're exchanging monthly payments for a vehicle that certainly will depreciate in value. What else? Credit cards. What else? Lines of credit. You have been taught to use everybody else's money. Whose money is everybody else's money? The banks. Where does the bank get the money? Because you gave up control of it. All your friends gave up control of it because you've all been lied. You are just putting money in the bank. Then you're essentially taking your money back out and you're paying the bank interest because the bank has learned how to make your money go to work for it instead of for you. And then they've also baited you into taking your own money back in some cases, because I meet a lot of people that have 40, 50, $100,000 in their bank account, and then they got a car loan for 40, 50, or $100,000. Does that make any fucking sense? Your money's sitting in the bank earning next to nothing, and then the bank is loaning the money back to you at three, four, six, 12% when it was your money to begin with because you gave up control. Wow. Folks, it's really time to learn the truth about money. And it's time for you to become your own bank. Our grandparents almost had this figured out because back then credit and money wasn't abundant, okay? But they were scarcity mindset because they were taught to be scarcity mindset. Today, if you've got money sitting in a bank, if you've got money sitting in a 401k, if you've got money sitting in a brokerage, and then you're going out and borrowing money, are you paying more on that loan than you're earning in your account? 
Don't judge in the rear view mirror. Don't just look at your past performance in the future. Will you make more on that account than what you're paying on the loans? If it's credit card debt that you have, the answer is probably not because I don't know many credit cards that charge less than 15%. Most of them are like 24. So are your investments with that advisor that you gave up control, are your investments with that 401k because you gave up control making more than what you're paying to the credit card companies? Probably not. Oh, but Chris, they made more this year. Okay. Can you continue that? Is that scalable? Is that repeatable? No, no, and no. Is your money making more than that line of credit? Is that money making more than that car payment? In other words, if you paid $40,000 for a car and that car payment is $600 or $700 a month in a five-year note, is your investment dollars earning more than five, six, or $700 that you're paying every month for that car? Folks, wake up. Your money should be working for you. Whatever your money is making should be enough to fund whatever it is that you're buying. By your money working for you, by you taking back control and allowing your money to work for you, the amount that your money makes by working for you should be enough to buy all the things that you want. You should save up enough money where that money kicks off in a monthly or annual return that is enough to pay for that car payment. And then what you should do is you should take the money from your bank and buy the car. And then whatever the car payment would have been to their bank, five, six, seven hundred dollars $700, pay that back to your bank. And that shows you how to get all the money back for all the cars you ever buy, drive, and own. But that's not just the formula to get all the money back for every car you buy, drive, and own. That's the formula to get all the money back for everything that you buy, drive, and own. Planes, trains, or automobiles. It doesn't matter because if you apply banking strategies to your money. If you become the bank by taking back control, by forgetting and getting rid of the lies you've been taught, by making your money go to work for you, you will understand how to get all the money back for everything that you buy, drive, and own. But there's a couple things you have to understand. The rules of prosperity are very simple. You can't be in a rush. You have to be patient. You have to understand that building wealth is a marathon, not a sprint. You have to understand that your money better be in your control. You have to understand that your money better be working for you, not for somebody else. If you had a business, let's, let's go through this and I'm going to wrap on this. If you owned a restaurant, if you worked hard and you were the entrepreneur, the proprietor of that restaurant, would you go to your restaurant to eat dinner? Would you go to your restaurant to have fun at the bar? Of course you would. It's your restaurant. If you owned a hair salon, would you go to your hair salon to get your hair done? Or would you go to the competitor down the street? That's silly. You'd go to your hair salon each and every time. If you owned your own fitness gym, would you work out at your gym and let all your customers see you working out at your gym? Or would you work out at the gym down the street and do Instagram and TikTok posts at somebody else's gym? Stupid, stupid, stupid question. Of course, you'd work out at your gym because you're the proprietor of that gym, of that hair salon, of that restaurant. Final question, because now we're on a roll. If you owned your own bank, would you make deposits into your bank? Of course you would. If you owned your own bank, would you finance the cars, the houses, the dirt bikes, all the things that you buy from your bank or from the competitor's bank? Silly question. Of course, you'd finance it through your bank. Well, the question I have, and this is the final question for this episode, why are you not being your own bank? That's a very good question. And the answer is very simple. It is not because I can't afford it. That is scarcity mindset. It is not because I don't own a bank. Well, that's because you haven't started a bank. You see, a bank does not have to be a physical location. A bank is a process. Banking is a process, a process of you taking back control of your money, a process of you making your money work for you, a process of you using your bank because you're the proprietor, because you're the owner for the things that you buy, the things that you drive, the things that you own. If you did this, your life would change. If you did this, your finances would change. If you did this, you would be able to create the life you want. If you did this, the life for your children and their grandchildren would be different because you would take back control of your money because you would understand the truth about money. You want to learn how to do this, folks? You, you with me so far? 
because I'm a little fired up because why people don't do this is beyond me. It's because they got a broken mindset because they've been lied to their whole life, just like you have been lied to. So take back control of your money by watching a video to learn how to be your own bank. Go to chrisnoggle.com. You can scroll down or you can just wait a second. Patience is a virtue. And a pop-up will come up for a 90-minute video teaching you how to be your own bank. It is that simple, folks. And it involves you changing just one thing. And that one thing is where your money goes first. Folks, I hope you had enjoyed. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Money School Podcast. We'll see you on the next one. Stop the lies. Start taking back control of your money and start right now. Watch that 90-minute video and it will change your life. See you next time.